everyone this is Jared from minijunkie.com and today's video is going to be about painting the new Vargas models uh, basically I wanted to uh, paint these using the airbrush quite a bit so I painted the wings separately which I you know usually I try to assemble a model completely before painting it but in this case it just didn't make sense so I'll be uh, I basically masked off the arm joints with uh, like liquid mask and that will be peeled off towards the end so I started out, they're prime black, and I'm airbrushing on a base coat of P3 coal black onto the uh, bodies and the, uh, the wing arm joints and things like that. The P3 Coal Black, when I airbrush it, it goes on pretty shiny. It's probably the mix I'm using uh, because that's dried and it actually still has quite a gloss to it. But by the time we're done, it's going to be everything will be matte finished. I missed a step videoing here or uh, videotaping here, but basically I I uh, coated all the the hair and stuff with uh, P3 Troll Blood highlight, and I'm doing the same thing with the wing membranes as you can see here, going for a nice light base coat that I can then use to to bring out some interesting bright colors to contrast with the dark flesh. With all the wings base coated with the troll blood highlight, I'm now just giving them uh, one wash with, fairly heavy wash with um, GW Leviathan Purple Wash. I did this to the, you know, one side of each wing, let that dry, and then and then apply it to the inside. But basically, I didn't want to be working on both sides at the same time and kind of get some some weird pooling and stuff when I was holding them. This is a nice way to bring out that sort of ribbed texture that they've they've sculpted onto the wings easily. Next up, I made a wash using some P3. Uh, Crix base, I believe it is, um, and I use it's kind of a dark greenish gray color. I uh, use that with some future floor wax to make a, a wash, which I applied to the to the hair that was base coated with the troll blood highlight. I'm trying to get a bit kind of a dirtyish green gray look, but we're going to be doing some some other work to it to make it sort of pop after the fact. So now while some of the washes are drying, I decided to uh, start laying down some of the color on the base. So starting out with uh, Adeptus Battle Gray, just airbrushing that onto the, you know, over the rocks and sand and stuff. Going to go for like a dead gray kind of graveyardy feeling and we'll be using some static grass to break that up. Uh, not too worried about getting it on the feet or legs right now because I'll be coming back over with some highlights and things with the P3 or the, the coal black so we'll be able to fix that up. So this is a nice quick way to lay down the, uh, the, base, the base on the base. Now what I'm doing is basically hand brushing on some of the coal black base coat onto the, the arms and, and the ribbing on the arms because you know once I've got that membrane washed with the purple. I can't really use the airbrush at this stage without kind of wrecking it. So this takes a little bit longer. I try to keep the paint a little thinner just so it'll flow nicely into the, you know, onto that area and especially when trying to apply it to the the longer sort of, I don't know what they're called, fingers of the wings, I guess. At this stage, just doing the outer portion. So we're not quite finished with those uh, the membranes. Next step was just to apply some basically some badab black, however you say it, uh, just down on the lower portion of the 
the hair, the coarse hair, um, just kind of giving it sort of some shadow towards the, as it hits the body. Not being too precise or anything because we're going to be doing some additional work to kind of help that blend into the, to, to the, uh, the hairs. So back to the airbrush for some highlighting and I know I've said in my past videos that I don't really use um, gravity feed but I've decided to kind of try it out since I've been seeing it recommended by other painters and that's not too bad once you use quick connect to, to quickly disconnect and clean out your cup it's not too bad and I think the smaller nozzle size definitely helps with a uh, step like this. So basically I'm, I'm highlighting all the highest like the you know the thigh upper thighs the upper part of the back of the legs, the back, a little bit of the head using a uh, coal black and then like one third of that um, troll blood uh, troll blood base, sorry P3. So adding some of that lighter troll blood base to the coal black to help lighten it um, without getting too too extreme. And here you can be you know pretty pretty uh, generous with the with the highlights because we're going to go back and do some washes and stuff to kind of pull them down a bit and bring back some of the, the dark shaded areas. Also doing it on the thicker parts of the arms of the wings without going too close to where the uh, the purple membranes are because I didn't want to mess that up. It's kind of hard to see in the video because it's, it's a fairly subtle highlight. can see at times I'm almost completely off camera because I'm still getting used to painting on the camera. <laughs> Every once in a while I remember and try to bring it back up in front of the camera. Next up I decided that the uh, the purple on the wings was a little too faded and I hadn't captured really the, the depth of the ribbing enough so I gave it a second wash with uh, Leviathan purple. At this point I was ready to uh, bring out some of the depth in the, the muscles and, and the shading on the bodies because I you know with the highlighting with the airbrush you end up do you do end up getting kind of a, a flat finish and and kind of almost dusty and you want to bring back that the depth of the shadows and things like that. So basically what I did is I used a 50-50 mix of Azurman blue and Badab black. Um, keeping it a little bit bluish to retain the the tones that we've got there in the with the p3 colors that we used um, really generous just just um, you know laying it on pretty thick and it'll dry and pool quite nicely when it's done Pretty much putting this wherever there was the, the blue that we airbrushed the, the skin tones and avoiding the hair of course. So the, the wash wasn't quite enough to bring out the, the nice texture on the wings so what I did is I mixed up some of that troll blood um, highlight, I gotta start remembering these paint colors, and mixed in a little bit of lich purple to create like a, a nice light purpley highlight and very very lightly dry brushed that the, the uh, texture with a uh, large dry brush really really light really quite quite a small amount of paint on the brush so you don't kind of get it into those grooves that we've brought out with the washes and a similar step just going with straight troll blood highlight and I take it from the bottle here without thinning because I'm dry brushing and you really you want it to be quite dry so there's no need to uh, obviously no need to thin it and just going really lightly over that the hair that we've applied quite a few washes to and things like that just to bring back the hair texture and give it that light you know light color so that um, it's not just sort of a muddy mess and 
Next up, what I'm doing is really, really light highlight with the Troll Blood um, base again, because in a way, so the the wash we did with the with the blue and black ink brought down the the brightness of that final highlight we did before. So now by doing it again, even less, um, you know, you get effectively you get like an extra layer of of highlighting and an extra layer of sort of gradient in your highlights. It's kind of it's totally cheating, but it ends up looking pretty good. And in this case, again, <clears throat> it's a really light highlight uh, just on the very kind of like the top, top surfaces, like tips of the, like the kneecaps, the edges of the, of the lat muscles you can see there, stuff like that. And again, here, I don't know if you'll be able to see it in the video, but here's another case where I would, you know, kind of spray across the facial features a little bit and kind of bring out some of those edges like the cheekbones and, and things like that. So I wasn't fully satisfied with that uh, the hair at that point, so I decided to hit the whole thing with uh, Devil and Mud. It's kind of my go-to wash. I'm sure most of you, or a lot of you, feel the same way. I wanted to make it, you know, bring it down, make it a little more natural looking, darker, kind of dirty. Um, so yeah, I wasn't quite feeling the super bright, sort of crisp dry brush highlight I did before, but I think in the end it, it kind of all works out. Next step, pretty straightforward, um, just dry brushing that Adeptus Battle Gray base, now this time using Fortress Gray or Stonewall Gray if you have Vallejo. Going for a fair bit of contrast because you want that texture to really kind of pop out a little bit and not be... I find Codex to Fortress is maybe a little too subtle, so I like to start with Adeptus. The step was a little unplanned, but when I was looking at the GW or sorry, the White Dwarf version of this of these creatures, um, you know, I, I wanted to go for darker skin tones and a darker look overall. But I did dig the way they had those black kind of gradients on their wings. Um, I thought that looked pretty cool, so I decided to apply that uh, effect to the sort of the edge areas of these wings. In some ways, I went maybe a little overboard, but I don't know. I think it turned out pretty good. Basically, just pretty simple, just uh, airbrushing basic black, um, trying to get a bit of a gradient so it's a bit faded towards the inside of the wing, and going to almost pure, basically pure black towards the edges. Next step, finally, is to paint in those the finger extension thingies. I need a word for that for the wings. Um, here I'm using just a fine, you know, certainly you're not going to airbrush this, so a fine fine detail brush um, and some coal black. I'm uh, not worrying too much about highlighting this part because um, it's so thin and subtle, but um, thinning it down a little bit so it flows nicely, and that way you can just follow the, follow the uh, shape of that without getting too much kind of over into the membrane area and wrecking the effects you've, you've built up or that I built up. <laughs> Next step, I'm using some of the colors we airbrushed before, so the P3 with about a third Troll Blood uh, base, and then just pure Troll Blood base. And, you know, I'm going to be sort of hand brushing on some highlights, things like, um, you know, the, the upper muscles of the wings, um, some of the little tiny bones of the wings where they join, um, and then uh, things like the, the highest edges on the face, so bringing out like the, the cheekbones and the the uh, brow and the things like that so wow I really screwed up the editing on this particular part of the video but anyway that's what I'm doing here and I've got multiple colors because in some cases I think that that pure troll blood base might be too bright so I can kind of pull it back down using that uh, darker shade so applying it to the ears you know, around the mouth and the jaw. It's really kind of hard to see in the video, I apologize. The face, you know, you, sh you probably know this, but obviously the face is such an important focal point for any miniature. I, I tend to take the face to an extra highlight level to make it kind of pop a little bit, draw your attention. Um, hopefully not too much, but that's usually what I do. And, and here, keeping it kind of thin because what's nice with the pre-mixed pre airbrush colors is they're thinned already so they go on you know you 
can certainly use a normal brush and they're they're a nice consistency for not so much blending but you know achieving some fairly fine layering so here I actually did go back yet again with the troll blood highlight and and highlight that hair some more I don't know I just wasn't quite ready to to let it go so you know apparently the the Devlin mud muddied it too much and I still wanted to bring back some of the texture but again really really light and really towards the very top um, tips of the hairs next up painting just basically black uh, chaos black on all of the little claws on the wings and stuff I like um, and also on the toe toe claws although I'm not sure if I actually filmed that portion but basically anything that was a, a to, you know, a claw or a nail, I decided just to, to make basic black. For the eyes, I'm using uh, sunburst yellow, I think, a really, really bright yellow because I plan to apply a subtle wash to that and bring it down a little bit, but use the brightness underneath as to help the eyes stand out. Just using a really fine detail brush. I was getting a little sloppy at this point. I should have probably thinned this down a little bit to make it easier, but um, it worked out okay. Now at this stage I've glued the arms on. I, I removed that masking and glued them on and then I was just uh, really quickly there trying to point to when they're put together there's going to be some little areas where the paint hasn't been covered or hasn't covered because of the masking. Um, and again, I don't do this very often, so I'm kind of learning as I go on this as well. Um, but the goal was to use various shades of those base tones, kind of paint into the recesses um, where the deltoid muscle, the, you know, the shoulder muscles are, um, and underneath the arm, and basically just hide that, hide the joint where uh, where they were glued together and make it look natural and blend it in with the existing paint job. I liked masking that part because um, plastic glue makes a nice strong bond um, when it comes to something like these wings. I don't think I captured it, so I was just pointing to the eyes. I also washed over the eyes with P3 ink, uh, red ink. I, it's a really, really rich red, and yet it lets that bright yellow pop out from behind it. So you get a nice kind of red-rimmed eye for these guys um, without, you know, not being super pure red and not being super yellow. Here I was just painting the hair on those little wings for the, you know, the boss creature, whatever the heck it's called. Um, and then I got, again, pretty lazy. Uh, base of troll blood highlight uh, and then I, I just end up washing it with some Devlin mud because at this point I wasn't going to do like five washes to those little pieces of hair there. We're in the home stretch. Uh, I like to do the edges of a lot of my bases using P3 Battlefield Brown. It's kind of a nice almost grayish brown, very very neutral, tends to blend into the game board uh, pretty nicely and just let the miniature sort of stand out. No magic here, just basically painting the edges. finish up these bases I'm using uh, army painters uh, swamp tufts you just basically pluck them off that sheet I apply a little bit of super glue to the bottom sticky part to give it extra stick and just place it on the base with those tweezers and tamp it down a little bit that's it some of them okay I say that's it but it's not quite some of them are a little scraggly uh, depending on how they come off the sheet so I use a little pair of like nail trimmers scissors and uh, just trim them up a little bit and make them look a little neater. Really like how this looks. I like it um, quite a bit more than static, basic st static grass. And if you haven't seen it, I did a video review kind of comparing the one I'm using here to GW's new product. Um, this stuff came out on top. So here's photos of the finished models after I've applied some Testor's Dull Coat to bring down all the shine. Uh, I think they look pretty cool. And uh, thanks for joining me. Thanks for putting up with my terrible video editing. I'm going to keep watching Bipainted's videos. He's a, he's a master. 
Um, hope you've enjoyed the video. Please rate, subscribe, and I love it when you guys leave comments. Thanks again. See you next time.